The United States of America, a nation that has left a huge mark on world history in the nearly 250 years since its foundation. And thanks to the 4th of July, we think it's high time we look at every alternate history of America in video games. From what if George Washington became a tyrant to what if Germany won World War II, there have been many takes on alternate history Americas over the years. Before we dive into them, a couple of ground rules. First, alternate history focuses on what if specific historical events were changed from our reality. That means a game asking the question, what if the Civil War didn't end in 1865 is an example of alternate history. But asking what if America had superheroes is not. Sorry Batman, you've gotta sit this video out, as, as much as that pains me. Secret histories don't count either. The battle between the Assassins and Templars may be fictional in Assassin's Creed, but since it didn't have a major impact on historical events, we're not going to touch it. With that out of the way, let's dive into it. I'm Caboose with the leaderboard, and this is every alternate history of America in video games. Let's start things off with one of the more popular what ifs. What would happen if the United States lost World War II? To put it simply, nothing good. Take the Wolfenstein series as an example. In the background to the New Order, Germany discovered secret technology that allowed them to get ahead of the Allies and subsequently win the war. After conquering Europe, the Nazis set their sights on America. That means dropping a nuke on Manhattan and occupying the rest of the country. Also, speaking English will become punishable by execution on July 4th, 1961. Fortunately, a certain American rebel by the name of BJ Blaskovich has woken up from a coma and is ready to kick some Nazi ass. By the 1980s, the United States was back to being the land of the free. A much less over-the-top version of the same situation can be found in the game Turning Point Fall of Liberty. Set in a world where Winston Churchill died after getting hit by a taxi in New York City, America finds itself invaded by the Nazis in 1953. Germany has super tanks, jet fighters, and a lot of military power at its disposal. Who can stop them? Well, I'm glad you asked. How about a construction worker? Protagonist Don Carson goes from building a skyscraper to shooting the puppet president of the United States in the head in no time at all, and in the face of Nazi super weapons, this somehow manages to be just as unrealistic. An equally popular question video games like to ask is what if the Cold War got hot? In other words, instead of trading barbs and fighting proxy conflicts, the United States and Soviet Union actually fought each other in open warfare. World in Conflict is a basic example of that. The Russians invade Europe and the Pacific Northwest, occupying Seattle and forcing America to retake some of its territory. If you haven't played it, I recommend it. Check it out. It's a fun real-time strategy game. But it's not as fun as Command Conquer Red Alert. It starts with Albert Einstein building a time machine to eliminate Hitler. But with Hitler gone, Russia grows so powerful it decides to conquer Europe itself. Time travel aside, it's a straightforward premise. Its sequels, however, are wild. Red Alert 2 has the Soviets invade the United States from three directions at once, playing as either side, it's your job to defend America or conquer it. I also forgot to mention that the Soviets have a minor control device in addition to a lot of other weird tech at their disposal. Weird how killing one person causes a lightning technology to become readily available. Yet as crazy as that is, Red Alert 3 tops it. After losing the last game, the Soviets built their own time machine and eliminated Albert Einstein from the timeline. Without Einstein, nuclear weapons don't exist, but that causes Japan to become a superpower that has giant robots as a military asset. And to no one's surprise, they also proceed to invade America, who never seems to be able to catch a break in this series. But in case the Allies do fight back against both the Soviets and the Japanese, you get to see the greatest line ever spoken in video game history. I'm escaping to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. Space! Moving on to something far less silly, we have Freedom Fighters, a game by IO Interactive, aka the developers behind Hitman. This cult classic is set in a world where the Soviets developed the atomic bomb first and nuked Berlin. Through those chain of events, this causes them to become the dominant superpower, allowing communist states to thrive around the world for years. And then, in the early 21st century, they invade America. But all is not lost, a plumber named Chris Stone becomes a resistance leader and slowly begins to fight back against the Russian oppressors. He even goes on to liberate New York City. Not bad for a plumber, if you ask me. I feel like our boy Chris Stone and another plumber that you guys might know about could definitely exchange war stories if they were 
were to cross over. Some technology aside, most of the histories we've covered so far are at least somewhat similar to our reality. If you're looking for a franchise that is more out there, look no further than Fallout. Its setting asks a simple question. What if the transistor was never invented? And while well, because it wasn't invented, the world instead experiences a golden age of atomic development wherein the aesthetic of the 1950s never ends. Instead of complex computers, we have simple terminals. Instead of electric vehicles, we have nuclear powered vehicles. And instead of superconductors, we have direct energy weapons and robots. This results in a bizarre series of changes. The United States becomes 13 commonwealths instead of 50 states. China becomes the main communist threat instead of the Soviet Union. But the biggest change is that the world becomes so reliant on fossil fuels that America annexes Canada, China invades Alaska, and eventually everyone nukes each other to oblivion. That's where the games begin. In the far future, the world is now a nuclear wasteland filled with mutant animals and raiders. From the west coast of America to the east, the Fallout games allow you to explore the future of what is one of the most interesting alternate histories in video games. Another alternate history America that is a bit more out there can be found in the Resistance series. The key difference here is the end of World War I, where Europe decides to band together and make a trading block. This prevents the rise of the Nazis and the Great Depression, but does cause the US to become more isolationist. Unfortunately, an alien virus causes Europe and later on the world to fall apart. While the first game is set in England, the second and third games see the aliens invade America. Spoiler alert, they absolutely wreck it despite the fancy tech humans have. The last game in the series then follows a trek across the country to defeat the alien menace once and for all in their headquarters in New York City. Why don't aliens ever make their headquarters in like Chattanooga? New York City has seen enough intergalactic violence in video games to last multiple lifetimes. Elsewhere, one of the few alternate histories that has its origins in the 1980s is Bioshock Infinite. Now the first two Bioshock games are in alternate histories, but they're not focused in America. The third game, however, does fit the bill. A prophet named Zachary Hale Comstock, with some scientific assistance, successfully created the floating city of Columbia for the 1893 World's Columbia Exhibition in Chicago. It's a huge success, and pretty soon the city is flying around the world espousing America exceptionalism and a whole lot of racist attitudes along with it. Unfortunately, Columbia decides to end the Boxer Rebellion violently in 1901 and succeeds from the Union soon after. Free from influence, it becomes a police state that no one can find. No one, that is, except for our hero, Booker DeWitt. Interestingly, Bioshock Infinite has an alternate history within its alternate universe. In a flash forward, you can see Columbia destroy New York City in the 1980s if Booker fails to complete his mission. And even though we said earlier that Assassin's Creed is an alternate history, it also has an in-universe version. In the tyranny of King Washington DLC for Assassin's Creed 3, the alternate history is that George Washington accepted the title of king instead of president. This makes the United States a tyrannical nation, to no one's surprise considering the name of the DLC. Connor, the main character, even remarks on how weird this is because he has been transported to this alternate universe. Fortunately, this timeline is eliminated, with only the perfectly normal world controlled by rival conspiracies still around. When it comes to the American Civil War, there's a lot of alternate history novels about it, but few games. The exception is Damnation, a steampunk shooter from 2009 set in a world where the war has been going on for decades. Steam engines replace combustion engines as the big technological change, though that hasn't helped either side actually win. But the long war means that America is weak, causing an industrialist to try and defeat both the Union and Confederacy in order to create a dictatorship. Needless to say, it doesn't work out. A divided United States is also the focus of Crimson Skies. In this world, thanks to a combination of ineffective prohibition and major influenza outbreak and the Great Depression, America is splintered into several different states that are all fighting each other. By several, I mean a lot. Just look at this map. There's a lot going on here, and I have lots of questions that I'm gonna skip over. What this means is that the nation's roads and railways are no longer being used due to the hostile borders. That opens the door for airlines and airships to become dominant which also means that air piracy is a major crime. As everyone is busy fighting each other, the air pirates are allowed to run rampant. Needless to say, booking a flight in Crimson Skies is a major hassle. At the very least, the world isn't as soul-crushingly depressing as it is in 
Hotline Miami. Though the series is a violent mind screw most of the time, Hotline Miami 2 Wrong Number reveals that it is set in an alternate history. Here, the Cold War escalates to the point where the Russians invade Hawaii and eventually nuke San Francisco. This causes the Russians and Americans to team up until both presidents are assassinated and everyone nukes each other. Considering the state of the world in the game, this might be a happy ending. One of the stranger video game franchises to use alternate history is the Homefront series. The first game isn't one, as it's set in the near future, but in making the second game, Homefront The Revolution, the developers retconned part of the background and ended up creating an alternate history. It's also a very complicated one. It starts when North Korea loses the Korean War and becomes a free market state. Later, the United States cancels the space program. This causes the Russians to land a man on the moon, which in turn inspires North Korea to rapidly develop technologically. A mega corp called Apex is created, which hires people like Bill Gates in universe. Apex eventually takes over the country, becoming a corpocracy, and subsequently conquers most of East Asia. And after a series of social and political crises in America, North Korea shuts down the military's capability to defend itself and attacks. This is all to explain how it's possible for North Korea to somehow invade America. A lot of hoops had to be jumped through to reach this point, and I'm not sure it was worth it. The developers should have taken a page from Metal Gear Solid's book and answered every question with nanomachines. Okay, I'm just kidding, but that's basically how Metal Gear can be summarized, especially the later games. The world follows similar events to ours up until the first Metal Gear Solid, at which point you have AI-powered robots, a massive ship crashing into lower Manhattan, and cybernetic soldiers. By the time of Metal Gear Rising, we've even got a US senator fighting a cyborg ninja with his bare hands. If that's not alternate history, it's this point, what really is? But out of all the examples we've listed so far, there is one series that takes the cake for the strangest, most unnecessary use of an alternate history America, and that game is Ace Attorney. In Japan, the franchise isn't really an alternate history game because it's set in Japan, but in bringing the game over to America, the English localization decided to set the game in California. This wasn't a big deal in the first few games, but as the series added more and more Japanese elements as time went on, an explanation was needed. According to localizers, Ace Attorney is set in a world where California never had anti-immigration laws. This caused Japanese culture to form a major part of California's cultural identity and also resulted in a Japanese-style court system. Ace Attorney may be the only example of a game that features an alternate history because of a translation decision. And you know what? I'd say it's worth it. And that's it. That's every major game that features an alternate history of America. Let us know what your favorite alternate America is and be sure to like and subscribe to the leaderboard for more videos like this. I've been Caboose and we'll see you next time.